Hey everyone, it's John with KGTropicals.com. It's Monday, August 19th, 2013. Welcome to this edition of Tank Talk. I want to start off today by apologizing about my rant in the last, I guess, two videos ago. I know it might have seemed harsh, but you know what? It worked really well. It hasn't been a problem since then. Thank you so much for helping us out with that. It was a big problem, and it's gone now. So thank you a lot. Now, a couple of things to update you on before we get started with the topic of the day. First things first, last night, Sunday, August 18th, I was on Blue Zoo Radio with Frank Reese. It was so much fun. If you're not familiar with Blue Zoo Radio, it's www.bluezooradio.com. They also have a YouTube channel. They also have a website, bluezootv.com, with a lot of really cool videos. It's all aquarium stuff. It's a great, great show. I've been following it for a long time, and it was a real honor to be on there last night. Hopefully I can be on there again in a couple of weeks. I was a little bit nervous. It was the first time doing a, an interview like that, a live interview. I was a little bit intimidated, but you know what? I relaxed, and, it, and we had some fun. So it was a good time. Thank you, Frank. What are the odds you're watching this? But if you are, thank you. That was a lot of fun. I can't wait to be on again. Now, uh, the next thing, <clears throat> this is a really big thing. I know I say this all the time. I say, oh, this is a question I get a lot. Well, I don't care what I've said in past videos. This is, without a doubt, the question I get more than anything else. It probably has to do with the fact that the aquarium hobby is booming in Canada, but I am constantly asked, can we ship to Canada? The answer to that question, unfortunately, is no. It's not that we're not willing to, it's more that it is made way too difficult by the government to be able to do those kind of things. I wish I could do it, but there's so much red tape and you gotta get these licenses and you gotta deal with customs and all of this. And even when you do get through all of that red tape, the charges for shipping are outrageous. I mean, a lot of times it's 250 or more dollars to ship across the border just for the shipping. So unfortunately the answer is no, we can't ship over to Canada. Maybe someday things will be different and it'll be a little easier for us and we will. I'd love to, but we, at this point, we just can't do it. Next thing, we got another huge shipment. I know I talk about this all the time. Hey, I put all of this time into these videos. You should at least let me advertise when we get something really cool going on here. We got another big shipment last week. The really cool thing about it, we got about 150 fish into this store. They're all male peacocks and haps. You gotta be excited about that, right? It's hard to go online, even online, and find males. So we got them. We got everything from Bicolor 500, Swallowtails, and Garth Lane Tails. We got some more OBs. We're gonna keep that special going. Uh, sulfur Heads, Flavescence, uh, Ali's, Yellow Blaze, Buconotos, Fireline Melotos. We got a whole lot of stuff, folks. Big Insignus, like five inch Insignus. So if you're looking for males, we've got them. Do it quick. A funny story, I'd, I'd love to say that it's because of that video that I did on them, but I'm not that arrogant. The Buconotos, we can't keep them in this store. It's funny, we got three last week. Uh, I don't remember what day it was. I think it was Wednesday that we picked them up and they were gone by Friday. I mean, we can't keep those things in the store. People see them, they've never seen them before, they know they're probably not gonna see them in a pet store again, and so they buy them right up. We also shipped one out to, uh, I think it was New Jersey, uh, over the weekend. So, those things, we can't keep them in the store, but we're gonna try to keep them coming in. That way, we'll at least have them available from time to time. But we do have a couple of big males still left, and we've got some unsexed buconotos. So if you're looking for those, definitely check them out. The other thing, is the Fireline Meloto. I know you don't see those all that often. We've got them, and they're there. Go on the website, check them out. I don't know that we've got a really good picture of those up there yet, but, uh, but go on there and check them out. Uh, very reasonable prices on those too. So, all right, enough talking your head off with all of these updates. I got a really good topic of the day, so let's move on. Every time I do a video that's away from the 240, it always happens in the comment section, somebody will say, what are those fish in the tanks behind you? So let me answer that real quick before we get started. First of all, in the first segment, I was sitting in front of a tank that is full of our uh, Taiwan reef haps. This tank is full of Fireline Meloto haps and Ethel Wayne peacocks. Good luck finding those Fireline Melotos anywhere else. And over here, 
we've got a male and two females, three and a half to four inch Fuscos. These guys are ready to go if you're wanting to breed them. First of all, I hope you have a big tank. Second of all, we got your breeding colony right here. I'd like to have a couple more females, but you got two. And then we also have four larger Ali males. Not exactly hard to find, but we've got them. And they're bright blue, so they look really good. So, now, let's get on to the topic of the day. Did you watch Breaking Bad last night? I thought it was a little boring. Anyway, we've got some unsexed Venustas going on here. I'm not doing a tour of the whole building, don't worry. And we've got some Zebra Obliquidens. These guys are absolutely gorgeous. They're like little rainbows. We don't only have Malawis here. We've got some Victorians for you too. And some Tangs. We've got all kinds of stuff. Tanganikans, not talking about saltwater Tangs. We don't have any salt water here. All right, no offense to you saltwater people. Our topic of the day today comes from a comment that was submitted on a previous video. It comes from Laura Wood. She says, I have an issue with my tank. Every time I change the filter, I have a huge ammonia and nitrite spike. Why is this happening and how do I prevent it? The tank is a 49 gallon bow front with an Aquion filter for up to 60 gallons. Should I add an under gravel filter? No! I don't like under gravel filters. You ask my opinion, I'm giving it to you. I don't like under gravel filters. I don't like how debris gets trapped underneath that plate down at the bottom. I, I just, I'm not a fan of them. So you ask my opinion, there it is. Don't get an under gravel filter. If you feel like you need to add more filtration to your tank, maybe you have a lot of fish in there or something, add another hang on the back to the back of your tank. Don't put an under gravel filter in there, but just remember, you can overkill yourself to death. You're going to hear me say that a lot because I think there is definitely a lot of overkill in this hobby and I'm kind of a more simpler is better kind of guy. But anyway, that's not the topic of the day. The topic of the day is these ammonia and nitrite spikes. Now, what you have to understand is there is bacteria in your aquarium that is not of the bad type. We call this beneficial bacteria. Beneficial bacteria is what breaks down ammonia and nitrite and converts them to nitrate. We remove nitrate by doing water changes in our aquarium. So, beneficial bacteria grows in your aquarium on everything. It grows on the glass, it grows in the gravel, it grows in your rocks, it grows everywhere. But one of the main places that your bacteria will grow is in your filter. Your filter is one of the primary places that beneficial bacteria is going to grow. So when you remove those sponges, you're removing all of that beneficial bacteria. And I don't, you didn't go into all that much detail, Laura. I don't know exactly what your procedure is when you're doing it, but I'm guessing that if you're getting that big of a spike, you're probably removing the cartridges and you're probably cleaning out the, the uh, filter. And that's a no-no. If you want to dump it out to get all of that brown ugh, out of there, that's okay. But don't go running your filter box under, under your tap water and scrubbing it out. Don't go doing all of that. I know it might look dirty and it might look funky, but that funk is a good thing. So leave it alone. I also would tell you only change one of your filter cartridges at a time. I know the instruction book probably says remove both and replace them monthly. What I will tell you is remove one at a time replace one at a time and only do it when necessary and you'll know when it's necessary because they'll be nasty they'll be caked they'll be brown when you get it to where it's obvious they're not blue anymore they're more of a brown it's time to go ahead and replace them now some people I've seen some tanks where the the water isn't even going through the sponge it's just toppling over because they're so caked on and so full of all of that nasty stuff that they're really meant to catch. Don't wait that long, but replace one at a time and do not rinse them under the sink. Don't clean your filter box out. Don't do all of that because when you do that, you're basically taking your best source of beneficial bacteria and taking it out of the equation. And so the nitrogen cycle has to start all over again. And what's happening is your bacteria, you're removing so much of it that it's now, there's not enough to be able to break down the ammonia and the nitrite. So this is why this is happening. If you're cleaning your filter thoroughly, stop. 
dump it out, get the loose debris out of there, but don't rinse it out or scrub it out with a sponge. Leave it alone. I don't care if it's dirty. Nobody sees it. Leave it alone. And only replace one of those cartridges at a time. Now, if you have a smaller filter, I know you don't, but anybody who's watching this, if you have a smaller Marine Land or Aquion or Aquatec or any of those other ones where there's only one cartridge, well, you really have no choice but to only replace that one. But with those filters, it's even more critical to not scrub out the interior of that filter. Never do it. Leave that filter alone. Let it be nasty. A dirty filter is a good thing. Okay, I know that sounds weird, but it's true. So, I hope that makes it make a little bit more sense. Uh, if not, Laura, comment again. Uh, I thank you for asking that question. It was a good one. I want to start doing that a little bit more, incorporating comments into the topic of the day. Some comments I get I wouldn't want to say on <laughs> the topic of the day, but that's okay. So, anyway, I hope this helps you, Laura. I hope it helps anybody else that might be watching. Thank you for the comment. Thank you guys for watching Tank Talk. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, if you haven't watched, or excuse me, listened to me on Blue Zoo Radio, go on www.bluezooradio.com. I'll put the link down below. Go to their archives. It's the 81813 uh, edition of it. I had a blast with that. Go listen to it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.